Hi everyone. Today we're going to be looking at the Productivity 2000 PLC Array Functions Part 1. An array is a storage for a group of common data type tags. They usually have some relationship with each other and need to be manipulated as a group. We can use arrays for motion control, recipe management, sequencing, like indirect addressing, math, etc. The Productivity 2000 series PLC uses arrays that are programmed using the Productivity Suite software. We will be defining an array and use this as an indirect addressing program. This will sequence bits in an output card indirectly. Let's get started with the Productivity 2000 series PLC arrays. Detailed information contained in this video can be found at accautomation.ca. A link has been put in the description below. If you have not watched the other videos yet, there will be links in the description below that will start you at video 1. There will be links to the rest of the videos in the series as well. So what is an array? Arrays are like spreadsheets. The spreadsheet is made up of columns and rows. Individual cells are addressed by the coordinates of the columns and rows. In our example, the highlighted cell is C3. The information that is in the cell can be any variable type that we want. Addressing Arrays in the Productivity Series PLC Individual elements, values in the array, are addressed by their index, or coordinates, the row and column. The address for the above elements in the array called Widget Progress is Widget Progress 4, 2. The format is the array name, followed by the row, and then the column. Note that the row and column index always begin at 1. This example was a two-dimensional array. So the 2D is the X and Y. The Productivity Series PLC can also have a one-dimensional array, which is a 1D or just the X. Since we only have one row in this array, we would address the element by the column location. In our example, Widget Progress 2, would be the location of the element highlighted. The format is the array name with the column number. Indirect address pointers in the Productivity Series PLC. We use arrays to handle indirect addressing in the Productivity Series PLC. A tag name can be specified as the index of the array. For an example, our widget progress with a pointer is a one-dimensional array, and a widget progress pointer row and pointer column is a two-dimensional array. Now creating an array, call up the tag database. Main menu, edit tag database. You can also get this under the application tools menu located under the right program folder. Select the add tags button on the bottom of the tag database window. We can now assign a tag name, Sequencer, the data type, 1D Array, the integer would be a 16-bit unsigned 1D Array, the columns will be 10. Hit Add to make the tag in our database. Select Close to stop adding to our tag database. Select Integers to view the integers in the program. You will now see that an array sequencer in the list. Sequencer 1 to sequencer 10 will now be available for our program. We can then fill the sequencer array with a series of initial values. Creating a sequenced event using a 1D array. We have created a sequence pattern in our output card using 1D array. The pattern will be the sequence array. Another tag called pointer. This will be used to select the value in our array. It will have the initial value of 1 and be an integer, 16-bit unsigned. This tag pointer will be the index pointer for our sequencer. When switch 1 is on, our output sequencer value is transferred to the digital output bits. The pointer is used as an index for the sequencer. 
Every other second, we will use the math instruction to increment the pointer value by one. Always compare the pointer to the value of 30. Once the pointer is greater than 30, a value of one is then moved back into the pointer. This will reset our sequencer. When switch one transitions from on to off, the pointer gets reset by moving the value of one into its location. You can see that using arrays with index pointers can be very powerful. Another simple sequencer is that you can program would be a traffic light. This can easily be done by using the same program above and changing the array information to correspond to the light sequence. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button below. If you have any questions about the video, please leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you want more information about us or you want our free ebooks on numbering systems or robust data logging, please click on the link in the description below to get it. A new video is put out every Monday, so make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get more videos like this in the future. Remember to click the bell beside your subscription to actually receive those notifications. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Stay safe.